What's up everybody? Today we're gonna talk about my Vortex separator. If you haven't seen my video on my parts washer that I took and heavily modified, uh, feel free to go and take a look. I'll try to put a card somewhere on the screen and maybe a link in the description. Basically, I took a cheap Harbor Freights part washer and modified it to have a couple of different filtering steps as well as the ability to have a couple of different nozzles on the end. So mine has three filtering steps. One of them is just a simple gravity separator. The flow goes down, the dirt falls down to the bottom, the pickup is higher up. The next step is this guy, which is a vortex separator. The idea here is the fluid let's call it dirty or somewhat dirty fluid comes through here, spins around, gets clean through some magic, I'll explain in a moment, clean solvent comes out the top here. And then the third step I have is just a simple filter. I used an oil filter relocation kit for a car that you can buy online to use an oil filter to do a final filtering step for my parts washer. So anyways, the reason for this video is to talk about the middle step, the vortex separator. All right, so let's start with how it works. Uh, basically, if we ignore this little down tube for the moment, the fluid comes in through the side here, spins around, and then the dirt magically separates and goes out the bottom and the clean fluid comes out the top. So the magic here is that it's basically a continuous centrifuge. So what you're having here is you're having the fluid come in at a higher velocity spinning really quick, and then all the heavy stuff is going to the outside, the lighter stuff is going to the inside, and then the lighter material goes out the uh, pickup here. So this is a suction line directly to my pump. So we're doing this as a draw-through system where we're pulling suction here, and it's drawing uh, through this tube and coming out the top. So you might be wondering, how does the, heart, the heavy stuff come out the bottom? These don't have to necessarily work through gravity separation, but that is an important component of how this particular one is set up. So the fluid comes in, spins around, lighter stuff goes at the top, the heavier stuff literally falls to gravity out the bottom. So on the bottom here you can see I have a, a threaded base, but in some other pictures and videos I'll show, uh, you can see that I have it connected to actually a pickle jar. So the pickle jar is a sealed container. The reason it's sealed is because the only flow you want going through this section is the weight of the heavier particles falling down, and then whatever it displaces would come back up in, in response. So you don't actually want to have flow through this side. The cool thing about vortex separators is there's almost no wrong way to build them. So basically, the faster the fluid's coming in here, and the smaller the barrel is, the higher g-force it's going to experience as it goes around and around and around, and that's going to both separate out particles better, but you're also going to have more of a pressure drop throughout the system, which basically just means it's going to be harder for your pump to pump a uh, given volume or a given flow rate through the separator. Now, these are super common in vacuums, and you can see them in all sorts of dust collectors and shops or vacuum cleaners. Uh, it's just super, super useful in that setting because air is very light. It's very easy to move. So you can get a lot of velocity and you can separate out dirt, which is pretty heavy compared to air, pretty quickly and easily. This one I custom made because I couldn't find the size that worked for me. Almost all consumer ones are designed for vacuum systems running air, or there's commercial ones that are designed for like, uh, they have vortex tubes, which are known to separate actually hot air from cold air. You can actually get temperature differential just based off of the separation of the density of the fluid based on temperature, which is pretty cool. But those have super high pressure drops. You're not getting a lot of flow through them. You're using a lot of pressure to run them. Uh, that's not the goal here. The goal here is somewhere in the middle of those extremes of the vacuum cleaner versus the air temperature separator device. So I did not do really any calculations on this when I built it. I just went to Home Depot and grabbed the biggest diameter copper tube I could get, the biggest diameter copper cap I could get, and then plumbed it in, 
with this nice piece here, which is the best nozzle I could find to kind of fit this one. I believe this is a uh, maybe a half inch adapter down to a quarter inch adapter. It's a two sizes step there, I remember. So this gets down to actually, it's about a, man, I don't even remember, maybe a quarter of an inch internal diameter on this nozzle piece. And then I think this is close to half an inch. I wonder if I have my calipers right here. Uh, let's see, what is that? This is pretty rough, but 0.57, so five, almost 5.8, 0.58 on the internal, that's inches, uh, on the internal diameter here. I don't remember what it is here, but it's uh, smaller. So let's go try to get the outside here. This one is 0.47 on the outside, call it 50 thou diameter, so, you know, probably close to about 3 eighths of an inch on the inside. Anyways, so, um... Yeah, I mean, that's really the, the basic uh, operation, basic construction. Now, the idea is, I don't exactly know why these all have tapers, but every one you can ever find commercially has a cone shape where it gets narrower at the bottom. I'm not exactly sure the mechanics of that. I tried to emulate that as best I could with just stepping down adapters. So there's the cap here, and then a, an adapter step down, and another adapter step down to get to my thread fitting here. This goes again to the sealed container on the bottom, which collects the dirt. There's only one thing, if I were to do this again, that I would really want to do different, and that's that I used the wrong size at the top here, and I tried to put in, I believe this is a 3 8 pipe, uh, and I just put this half inch one, I did not have the correct adapter, and I just filled it in with solder, you can see it's kind of crooked. Um, if I did this again, I would, I would probably use an adapter at the top. Um, the only thing you can't really see on the outside of this is how deep in this tube goes. So this tube goes in just just far enough to make sure that the the fluid coming in gets one good, you know, gets a really good spin started before it hits the pickup tube. I don't know if it would be better if I extended it down further. I really, you know, basically the only calculation I did on this one was the flow rate, the diameter, the tip diameter here, figure out the velocity of the fluid through it to figure out the, the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, centripetal force, um, to separate out the, the dirt from the fluid. Uh, at full tilt with the pump that I have, which is about three gallons per minute, this thing is doing over nine Gs of uh, separation uh, acceleration. Um, so that's actually pretty good. Before I talk about how I built it and uh, and why I built it out of copper. I just want to mention that does it work? Kinda. So as I was going through my my journey building my uh, parts cleaner, one of the things that I ended up doing is I ended up putting on a variable dial on my parts cleaner. Again, you can see that in in the parts cleaner video, and I really just realized that. For my parts cleaner, it runs best at pretty low velocity, pretty like a gallon a minute, maybe even less than that. So I'm often running it pretty slow. And I think it's just a little bit too slow for this thing to do its magic. If I was running it full tilt the whole time, I'm sure this would do a lot better job. When I first put this in my parts washer, it seemed like it was doing a great job. I was running a lot faster. And then I just started running it a lot slower. And it doesn't really seem like it's separating out the dirt that much anymore. By having multiple outputs on my parts washer, I can, you know, kind of control the flow a little bit better, actually run higher velocity of fluid through the entire system to get more filtering um, without it, like, coming out the nozzle super fast and hard. All right, so why did I make this out of copper? So the reason I made this out of copper is really simple. It's going to be submerged in solvent 24-7, 365. I only take this out for this video. I, it's a service-free part. I'm never doing anything with it. So I just didn't want to have to deal with the fact that plastics might degrade. I might choose the wrong plastic or the, right, the wrong adhesive, and it would just fail inside the drum. I mean, I have this in an opaque drum that is filled with solvent all the time, so I don't open it up and look at it. So rather than making this out of, like, PVC, which I thought about at first, I made it out of copper, I thought, hey, I have a soldering kit, I know how to sweat pipe, so maybe I can just do some modification 
and make it out of uh, out of copper. And actually, it worked out super well. This was the first time I've ever done this, and and it was actually a pretty amazing and pretty uh, good idea. Obviously, you can see I'm not the greatest at. It really takes such a small amount of solder. I have a tendency to over solder my joints, um, but whatever, it doesn't matter for this application. Uh, drilling this this tangent here was obviously the hardest part of the whole assembly. But once I went to sweat it with the, the solder, the solder actually wicked around there really, really well and made a really strong sealed bond. I was really impressed. Um, basically all I did was drilled in from the top and then just walked my drill sideways uh, as I uh, stepped up larger and larger size to get to the right size for this. It actually worked. I think I cleaned it up a lot with a Dremel beforehand. I know I, know I, I did a tangent uh, on this after it was soldered with a Dremel. Basically, um, the order in which I put this together is I started with the cap. I put the tangent piece on the cap and I drilled the top and put the adapter in the top of the cap before I sweated it, sweated it, is that the right term? Before it got swat <laughs> to this adapter. Um, and when I did that, I made sure, if you're not familiar, when you sweat pipe, uh, basically what you do is you hold the copper on the back side and the torch from the other side, and then when the copper, or when the solder melts on this side, it just wicks around really quickly. It goes around the whole entire thing. So the front, you take the heat off, it solidifies, and you have a sealed joint that's super strong really quickly. Um, so when I did that, I made sure that I was doing this piece with the torch and holding my solder against that piece so that this was not hitting its melting point. Now, I don't, I'm, I'm assuming solder is designed this way, but basically when you reflow solder multiple times, it seems like the melting temperature gets higher and higher and higher every time it's reflowed. So this one, I was pretty happy with the fact that it didn't ever seem to reflow. The, after the first time I did it, I was just careful as I stepped up to the different adapters. Again, here, I did the same thing here where I would hold the torch on this part when I was putting in the adapters. It was pretty good idea to try to get at least some of this done, uh, maybe this adapter piece here before attaching it here, because you, you really don't want to have to redo these joints because these joints are, are the hardest to do and, and they're not, it's not the way that these pipes are designed, right? These pipes are designed to do these joints. Um, so anyways, at the end of the day, if, if I were to section this, it would look almost exactly the way it looks on the outside. There's really no secret sauce in the middle that's happening. Um, and yeah, I don't remember the exact adapters. I think I'm going to try to look them up and put them in the description of the video. But that is basically how it works. I will go through really quickly. Again, we have an adapter here. This is a step down from a maybe a quarter inch pipe down to an eighth inch pipe step down. This cap is probably a one inch, maybe a one and a quarter inch cap. This would be a one inch to maybe three quarter inch adapter, and then probably the three quarter to a half inch adapter, or maybe even, um, I'm not exactly sure on the sizes, okay, because I know pipe sizes are not what they measure on your calipers, so I'm going to have to put that in the description. Um, and then, I, ideally, it's the same pipe on everyone. I noticed that this size pipe fits my hoses really well, so uh, getting to this size was really important. I would say if I did it again, I would maybe even build it smaller for the lower flow rate. Maybe start with the idea of using one gallon per minute flow rate and, um, and then go from there. Do all the calculations based on one gallon per minute. This is basically designed for three gallons per minute, and that's, that's just way too much for my parts washer. So I would do this last. If you're ever going to do it yourself, I would get your parts washer all set up. Definitely do the filter. Definitely do the gravity separator. And then if you want to add this one, it was the most work, maybe least impact, and also needs to be tuned to your particular setup um, the most out of all of those things, right? All right, so if you like this video and you thought this was helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. All right. Thanks for watching.